welcome to another video from theplayers8.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look, first impressions wise, at Mr. President from GMT Games. Uh, this is a solitaire game, although we're both here. We played this cooperatively together. Because uh, it's a big game. It's massive. We wanted to kind of just get a feel for it and... Yes, and uh, so it's designed by Gene Billingsley, and this has been in the works for a number of years. I think seven or eight years, it, maybe? So when we first got into like wargaming and GMT... 2015, 20, yeah, 2016, it this was... This was already in the works then. And for a couple of years, and, and I And probably think. had been for a while. So yeah. probably almost ten years. So this is a long time coming out. <laughs> a lot of people have been looking forward to this, and here it is in all of its massive splendor and glory. Mm -hmm. Uh, this thing comes in a four-inch box. It's freaking huge. Uh, and it I, weighed about 17.5 pounds, right? Some stupid I mean, like it was that. ridiculously it was heavy. And I did, a, I did a big unboxing of that, so you can watch that to see a bit more of the ins and outs. But having played it now, I understand a lot more oh, of what yeah. some of the counters are and all the different yeah. stuff. That's always the way these yeah, things are. But especially when the games are so big, it's like... Yeah. It's I always love it when people say, know. oh, you should... You know, do your research before you unbox. Hey, man, come on. <laughs> this is a hobby. For some games, it's also like... The, yeah, pretty easy. Yeah. But, uh, so, we have... We sat down. We played this the past about four or five hours, at least. Yeah. Uh, well, well, first off, it took almost an hour to set it up. Yes. To, to get all the counters on the board where they're supposed to be. To do things like choose our... Uh, our staff, our cabinet. Yeah, and then your little abilities, like uh, presidential abilities and stuff. Yes, yeah, so, so there's there's some setup, there's some choices in that concept, and and then there's some even, uh, there were like some initial scenario cards, not scenario cards, like effect cards. Yes, there was some cascading events. Called. Yeah. And it was that initially started that then... Uh, Changed uh, some uh, things around. Thing. Yeah, so... So it took an hour to set up, and then I bet we played... Probably four to four and a half hours. Yes, that's that's very fair. Now, uh, for reference, we played the sandbox scenario. So not uh, a historical no, scenario. No, but there are historical scenarios. There's like four of them for um, four of the presidents because this the subtitle is 2001 to 2020. So there's a bunch of different presidencies where you have to play the four years and get reelected. Yeah. Whereas the sandbox one is you just play the four years and what did you score kind of a thing. But it's it's much more open, whereas mm -hmm. the scenarios have like the event decks and, and the different set, setups are more like, at this time, yeah. historically, it was like this, so. Yeah. Well, we played it as a sandbox. Uh, this is a big sandbox. And having played it now and understanding what all the stuff is, mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah, we took an hour to set it up. The setup might be 45 minutes next time. Yeah, it would because be Because it better. was searching for all these counters. Yeah. Organizing well, is going to be a nightmare, by the way. Putting it away is going to be really challenging. It, it actually reminds me of the, uh, you know, we played the Heroes of Normandy just... Yes. And it also had 10,000 counter counters. So yes. we're going to figure out how to organize that one as well. Yeah. So, but n understanding what the game pieces are and look like and where they kind of go on Helps. the board, I would be able to set this up better next time. Yeah. But, you know, I've heard people taking also a very long time to set this up. Yeah. So just know that going to your first game is going to be take a long time, set it up. A lot of the stuff's going to be fairly meaningless to you. And Until you get into it. And the game recommends that you kind of set this little sandboxy one up and that you walk through a couple different things. And yeah. there is a unbelievable amount of paper and books and charts in this game. A lot. But here, here's here's just a few just of, like them, the of it. But right? they give yeah, the rest of it's like on the floor down here. So, so for instance, right, yeah. so this is an ally and rogue states book. This specifically deals with your allies. So when they're activated, yeah. you go through an entire process and it's a multi step process that takes 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, this this book is for and four counters one, on the board. Yeah, it's for one thing. Yeah. And then there's another book here for Russia. So when Russia acts, there's a whole process here you got to go through. <laughs> That's for one counter on yeah, the board. Yeah, for, for one counter on the board. <laughs> and then you've got, uh, what, what was this one? This is the, the WMD, the That's WT. Like, oh, yeah, Th this is a lot of the military stuff. The military stuff. Then we have several play aids, and then there's, there's other a whole snack on the floor stuff. down here. But just understand, it's, it's very intense. Yeah, lots of chart flipping and yep. referencing stuff. But 
th there's a little kind of like two or three page like intro briefing of like, hey, here's what this game is. This is what it looks like. Here's kind yeah. of the flow of what this game is. And then there's like this, um, oh gosh, there's like a little handbook guidebook, which is kind of like a playbook where it's like, hey, if this is your first time, look at these kinds of things and do this kind of stuff. That's very helpful. And, and, and then the most important part is that there is a like significant, like very sturdy flip book. Mm -hmm. It's and, actually spiral bound. Yeah, spiral bound and it's all card and effectively you play through that and reference some of these other charts mm -hmm. where it tells you uh, and that's how we played the game. That's how it recommends that you do that. And frankly, you couldn't play it without that. So yeah. once we kind of got into it, going through this, I felt like, yeah, it was slow because it was our first game. Once we started doing the same things again, it was like, okay, this thing's yeah. coming up again. This thing's coming up again. I know the kind of what to expect f from that type of thing, at least. Yeah, so, and, and I would say that the way those books work, those you know, those chart style yes. games that we've all played, you, you know, you have to read the priority, not the priorities necessarily, but is Russia's... Yeah, the condition. Is Russia's posture one and blank? No, you go to the next element. Yeah. Is it two and blank? Yes, it is. So we go, and then you got to take an action and then you go to the next step in it. And I actually think it's very well laid out. Yes. And there's enough detail and grit there that you're going to understand exactly what you're going to have to do, if not having to read it two or three times to to feel your way through the intricacies of what they're trying to have you do. Yes. But it's all right there. And guess what? It's a solitaire game. Yes. So you have nobody pushing you. There's yes. not a time limit. You don't have a guy across the table waiting 45 minutes to take his turn. Yeah. You do this game at your own speed. And, and yes. I think that's why it's made this way. I also think you can get your laptop or your iPad. You can probably get these on GMT's website. Yeah, have them on a PDF. And have them on a PDF, and that mm. might help. It could do. But the, you just split. need to understand there's a lot of charts, there's a lot of aids, and you're going to be flipping back and forth. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. It's the, it's the style of game that it is. Yes. I want to make sure people understand that, because I, I, I was asked on Twitter, oh, is it just a chart flipper? Yeah, it's a chart flipper, but... It's on steroids. Right, but there's meaning behind what you're trying to do. Yes. There's options, there's choices. You get to choose about what... you have. How many actions do you have? I mean, domestic, military, domestic. presidential, diplomatic. Yes. You, you can affect all different types of things. And each of those has like, you know, eight or nine different actions on them, all of which are very varied and very specific as yeah. well. Like there's, so people are gonna be like, ah, is it just a chart flipper? Okay, I, I've played a lot of those style games Yep. and they're paper thin, right? This is not that. No, the, and th those games it's like, I roll a D10 and it gives me like, this is the type of something that I encounter. Well, guess what? They're all the same, it's yeah, just right. flavor. Yeah. Th this is very different to that. Mm -hmm. Yes, you will reference a lot of different charts, but some of the charts are three pages long, yeah. and it's and it's a D10. There's ten options, and the options are this big. Mm -hmm. They're both very descriptive and very detailed, and have numerous effects on the board yeah. that you have to go and deal with. So, I would liken this much more to a States of Siege on steroids, rather than something like a Silent Victory on steroids. Yeah. Even though you know there's elements of both. But to me, mm -hmm. this is a game where, as you go through the sequence of play and all of your actions and the cards and crises that are coming at you, you're trying to react with the few actions that you have to keep all of your plates spinning and to keep everyone away. Yeah. It's very States of Siege. Yeah, the I, mentality I wise, at least. Well, and, and I also, we talked a lot of it about this as we, going, we were going through it. And I also feel like the subject matter tended to draw my remembrance to that, but Labyrinth, right? Yeah. Labyrinth, this has a lot of Labyrinth-esque type things, stability, yes. trying to make rolls. Just like GWAT and global relations in that game, yeah. you've got that here, but it's with Congress, it's with your cabinet. And, and you're trying to raise like stability and alignments yep. 
to make your roles in those areas easier or better. That's a, yep. It looks different, but conceptually those yep. things are. And, and as those things increase, you can then start doing things like kicking China influence out of areas, ending wars, uh, you know, doing different things. Yeah. So th there's a lot of similarities there boiled down into a chart flipping dice rolling. A lot of dice rolling. Lots of die rolling. And, a lot of times the, the modifiers are maybe negative one or, <laughs> or negative two. Or, or plus three, yeah. not good. Typically and rolling low in this game. Typically, and it, there is a lot of dice rolling. I think that was my only concern because some of the choices I felt like, man, I wish there was a political consequence that I could risk to somehow, and you kind of have that with the action points. I, I, I get the, but that's, yeah. But that, that was the one thing I thought, okay, sometimes I'm just rolling a dice. So you need to understand that as well. Sometimes you're just rolling a dice and you're hoping you're going to roll a four or less so that you can succeed at yeah. whatever you're doing. And it's on a D10. And so yep. the odds are very bad a lot of the time. 30, 40% chance. And, yeah. and we failed a lot of rolls. It, it actually was very interesting because I think our first like turn. Yeah, we made a bunch of rolls. I made all the rolls. Well, I need a two or less. Bam, got it. And and when the UN acted, they did bam, bam, bam. They'd all four of their things succeeded. It was and, like, yeah, and we're great. like, oh wow. And then later on, it just we seemed couldn't like get it. We, we couldn't get a roll. I couldn't buy it, one. But once again, all of those things meld together to create the fabric of this game, which is a, it, it's a narrative. You're creating yes. a narrative, creating a story. We fired our Secretary of State. We just fired. We just fired the Secretary of State because he was so bad. He had a he had a zero political rating, and that was my well. I, I chose him at the beginning, and I should not. Well, we didn't fully understand, yeah. but we ultimately ended up firing him. That was a very interesting thing. There are some scandals rocking the White House it, at this time. We don't know what the scandals are. They're not really that specific. Yeah, but but we, that's we got to deal with that. But that's the beauty of this game. Yep, is is those narrative moments yes. as well. Like, yeah, it's cool, like doing all of the procedural stuff and and, and trying to keep the plate spinning. Yep. But then it's like, very early in the game, our Secretary of Defense he got promoted. He got promoted to his good side. He got I don't experience. remember how that happened. I, I, I we rolled really well yeah, on, on, on something a, on a cabinet improvement. And role. he turned into where he everything was, was a plus two modifier. He was a one or one a negative one two with modifier. A plus one action and got yeah. to a two 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 with a plus one action. So we modifier. tried to ride that pony as long as we could. <laughs> And, and, and he's the one that got embroiled in yeah. the scandal, which was a die roll to figure that out. And, and it was like, oh. he started dragging in the president is now. Because we kept rolling poorly yep. on the scandal. So like, it was like this really good guy, but he's embroiled in a scandal. Yep. And so now I'm weighing up, oh, i got to fire this guy. Yeah, because if you fire him, your public opinion improves a little bit. Then and the, we and the, scandal, that, and the scandal goes away. But we lose that good guy. Yeah. It's so hard. It's a... That's where I think the game shines because yes. there are some really tough choices like that. Really but, tough. Re, re, from, you know, action points. Action points are limited. We got what, like 20? And that is supposed to last us. Yes. Like around 40 actions. And we have. And that's tough. We have one left and we have two, like. Two more eight, rows yeah, of probably, actions. Probably like eight more boxes yeah. that we've got to get through. So we've had to make choices. Okay, do I risk one here to get a negative one modifier? Yeah. Nah, I'm not going to do it. Oh my gosh, this one's really important. I got to do it. Or you can forego an action to gain to an gain. action point. And we and have not like, done that much because those nah. actions are so scarce yes. and so important. I, I think that's the other thing. Is I, I'm not sure I fully understood the scope of this game, but yes. it is like three games in one. Yeah, that's fair. You, you're dealing with the legislative side where you're trying to push some agendas and some bills through... You're trying to build your relations and your cabinet to improve. And then you've got everything in the world. And it's, man, if you focus just on the world, this is all going to go to crap. Yes. And then if this all goes to crap, you're not going to be able to do you, much you of this You can't pass well. any bills. Yep. You're, and, and so, like, because the game's going to end and you have this score that's based on, like, your legacy and your prestige. And if you don't pass these, bills, you're not going to have a legacy. Yeah, if you don't fulfill your kind of campaign promises yep. and your legislative agenda, or if your legislative agenda does not align with the public yeah. once. That was something I'd like to see play out a little bit more. Yeah, we, we didn't, haven't necessarily... We didn't quite get there, but I think that there's going to be ramifications right. if, you, if you're not doing what they want necessarily. Yeah. No, I agree. 
but but it's like yeah, three different the... three different games. Oh, yeah. This felt much more like Labyrinth esque. Yes, yes. Y- you know, stability, trying to deal with wars and civil wars, P- and putting putting down terrorism, removing yep. rogue states. I, I agree. Very with much entirely. a Labyrinth style. This was very different. It was a little more resource management, a yeah. little more, y- you know, I gotta. And it's it's funny because the first couple of turns that we did, we were like, okay, we got to build this up so that we get some bonuses in the. And I thought that was a good investment. Yeah. We just unfortunately took too many to get that. Yes. We rolled so poorly. But you've got to build up like your media contacts, and you got to build up your relations with Congress, and you got to get some friendly political allies here, and that that was just really interesting. And then, my gosh, the crisis cards, yeah. and they're just brutal. Yes. And it's like... And you will pull a lot of them as well. I mean, it, it's very common for you to pull three or four yeah. in in the little time then, that you're doing that, and they're all bad, almost all bad. Yeah, well, it, it, but there's so much variety in those as well, which yeah. I, that was, I thought that was a credit to the game as well. The, the other thing I thought was hilarious, uh, there are two good times chits in that, cup of maybe 20 chits that you're drawing for the crises. Yes. And I drew it on the first draw, right? Yeah, so the other one is in here still, right? So, so it's still in there, but that was kind of a unique one because that gave us a nice little start kind of to get, you know, going. Is, is it not in there? Is there a second maybe one? Maybe there isn't a second one. So I literally drew... The only good one the on the first good one time in there. I like this case. So, but that, once again, that's the narrative you're telling. Yeah. It's a narrative you're building. There's a concept here. Very fascinating game. I, I think there's some things I'd like to flesh out more and better understand. Yeah. Once again, when I pull this lever, I'm not sure what's happening over here. And when I, and, and we haven't gotten to that part yet. Four yeah, hours later, we haven't necessarily seen the fruits of all of our labor. Yes. I and think and then I'll be like, oh, I understand. Yeah, I feel like we're finally figuring out some, some bits of, it. of the game. Yep. Of like, oh, if we do this, this, and this, that means that we can then follow it up with this, which helps yeah. us with this, which does this. But there's there's so much here mm-hmm. with buttons and levers that it's like it's kind of nuts. So yeah, the, the other thing I would say because I think some people asked us, it it's so daunting. It's so I I agree, man. This is huge. Yeah, but table space wise, it's all. Uh, I've got a. This is a, I think a regular. It's a three by three by five, five table, and it's too small. Yes, this is too small. You're going to need if you have a table this size or smaller. You're going to need a couple uh, kind of dining or uh, table trays. What are those called? Yeah, the like TV, TV dinner, dinner trays, trays. Whatever. You're going to need two or three of those set up to have some stuff. But it looks daunting. Yeah. But when you when you read through the rules and when you set it up and you take that first hour to familiarize yourself, all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, I understand what this means now. This is this and. This is the this and okay that makes sense and I yeah, get it and, and it's less daunting and the uh, and the charts here I'll reach down and pull this up like this uh, chart book or like the, uh, this it flip you book everything. turn sequence flip book it, it feels quite like a Jerry White game where it's, it, it guides you through step by step and it's like hey man. Like, just do this little section here. We're going to read through all this. We're going to do this, this, mm-hmm. and this. We're going to roll on this chart that I've printed for you. And then, hey, once we're done, move forward on the next track. Then we're going to concentrate on the next thing. So it teaches you it's step by step, and everything's kind of yeah. comp- compartmentalized to ease you into that. So yep. I do think that they they knew this was a very complicated game. Oh, there's no but doubt. They've done a, a really good job of giving you the aids to get into this. Yeah. I, I also think as complex it is, as it is, as big as it is, as many pieces as there are, and as mov- many moving pieces as there are, this played pretty well. Yes. Like, I enjoyed it. It, it made sense. It yes. was interesting. It's unique. I, is it my favorite? I think time will tell. I, I want to play it some more. Yeah, this is... We have... I mean, I feel like we've only scratched the oh, surface th- of this. We're not even through one full year. No. Like, there's still things that I don't, like... Yeah. I don't, I don't know how these work together. Oh, I don't know what... Nope. I don't know what this does. I don't what know. are the ramifications of us not doing this? Like... Who knows? I know that there will be some. Yep. Because otherwise, this wouldn't exist. Yep. But, like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. So, th- there's still parts of this that we haven't even kind of, like, got to yet. But uh, I, what, what I would also say is, is I think... 
the the game itself isn't mega complex from like any individual standpoint. This is mm -hmm. the complexity is because this is ten thousand simple <laughs> things. Yeah. In the Mashed interacting, together. that's the complexity. Yeah. Which reminds me a little bit of uh, Europa Universalis. Yep. Where that was ten thousand reasonably simple things interacting yep. in a very complex way. I found this much more enjoyable. <laughs> oh no doubt. Like if I just it was. Well, but that's you know some some games like Empire of the Sun is just complicated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is really the complexity can be broken down much easier, I feel. Well, and the complexity really is in how it all works together. Yes. It's not the individual parts. The individual parts are pretty simple. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you Roll have... Roll on a chart and do what it says. Yeah, you great. have little charts. The aids are really good. It's just figuring out what, what am I going to do and how yeah. am I going to do it. What should I be doing in reaction to yeah. those things? Because you, you know, you've got four double-sided menus of actions. There's a lot of take. choice. That's a lot, right? Yep. That's a lot for a new player. Well, it's, it's funny because I remember when we started... Four and a half, five hours ago. Yes. We read in the book. Was that in the flip book? Where that, it says, yes, yes. Hey, hey, man. You always like to say that. Hey, man, if this is your first play, you're thinking about, what the heck am I going to do here? It's well, great. Let, let me help you. Do this. Yes. And, so, and it, it, was, it made sense. So when I got that look into what, what we should be doing, I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Now I know what I need to try to do. It didn't take you very far. It only went through three or four of the actions. Yeah. I, I always feel like, can you give me 50 actions? To... Yeah. And, I... and there's a playbook. <laughs> Maybe there's a little more of that in there. I, I, uh, I haven't looked a, a at bit. that. But yeah, it was... It, it didn't was, say hit, man? No, it pretty okay. much does, though. Because it guides you through all this setup and all these different yeah. bits and pieces. I had a blast setting it up, by the way. And the first time you... It says... Like, the first time you get it, it's like, hey, um, POTUS and all the cabinet members get to do actions. And we both looked at each other and we're like... Yeah. <laughs> and then literally the next paragraph is like, if this is your first game and you're wondering which actions to take, please see if this is your first turn <laughs> on page six of the presidential briefing book for suggestions to get you started. And that, we walked through a bunch of stuff and it kind of explains, hey, yeah. you should do this and this is why you would do that. I, I think and the it was really good. I think the first action it had us do was move some troops over to uh, Asia and Pacific be because you know that's going to be a hot zone, Yes, right? And there's going to be some wars there and, and you wanted to get, so it's like, okay, that makes sense. And now we saw when we did a battle, we were like, okay, that's why it's important to have Your carriers. aircraft carriers in this area because they're adjacent to three or four different theaters. Yeah, and it and was they, like, hey, you use your, you know, Secretary of State to like yeah. bump up your cabinet effectiveness because and they're uh, like cabinet effectiveness in the long run is very important yes. for when you make those cabinet effectiveness checks and stuff. And so it, it, that that was very helpful and it was just funny because they like yeah. they knew they're like you're you're a new player just yeah. do it. But I, this game is a lot. I I do not believe this is overwhelming. I think anybody can do it. I think this is gonna. It's gonna be easier. It's work though. It's, it it's, is. It's, it's an investment. It's gonna be easier for you if you've played narrative driven, chart flipping. Yes. Solo games in the past. Yeah, I, that will help. Yes. So if I think about something like Target for today. I am very used to reading that style of yeah. game. So reading the big charts in this, I'm very familiar with what that looks like and kind of going through those. Yeah. So that's easier. That's a, it's a skill. I feel like I'm mm -hmm. pretty good at that. So that that does help. I, the only the final other comment that I want everything went badly. Very yes. quickly for us. This is and, and that's this game. Yes. This is a game of an unconscionable amount of bad stuff is going to happen to you. How do you deal? And with you it? are j trying to like deal with it. Yeah. I don't know how we're ever going to get ahead. There are there. There were modifiers where it's like, if you have an approval rating of 60 or more. And we were like, what? Like, what? Okay. We're approval rating at 32% 32 32. right which, now? Which, it was down in the 20s earlier in well, the Well, we game. started at 40? Yeah, it started at 40. 40. So we were down like, to 24, I think, at one time. Uh, like, because if you do poorly, man, it can just snowball. So the game, in theory, allows you to do well in it. I don't mm -hmm. know how, but maybe we'll figure that out one day. Or maybe that's just put in there as like a tease, just to be like, hey, we're going to put this hilarious modifier you're never going to get, just to make you feel bad. Sure. Well, I don't know if they're vindictive like that, but 
Yeah, sixty percent. I kept saying to myself, "Hey, no way." <laughs> But it's yeah, just no way. There's some really nice, fun moments in this game as well. Mm -hmm. um, we rolled, I don't remember what chart it was. Oh, it was the Good Times chart. Yeah. Where we had the the uh, the San Francisco Giants came to the uh, White yes. House. Yes. Which is Gene's favorite, favorite team, team, baseball team. Boo. And, then, yeah. and, and, the, yeah. and he's got like, hey, the San Francisco Giants. And then he's got like brackets like, oh, whoever your favorite team is. Yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. some funny little bits and pieces in some of the less serious elements of this game, which right. is really fun. A really personal element to it, which I appreciate because yeah. he's putting, you know, decades worth of work into this. Oh, yeah. So it was fun to see all that come to fruition for him as well. I, I liked it. I had a good time. There, we had a lot of laugh out loud moments. We had a lot of oh my gosh, are you kidding? You know. Yeah, I, I maybe get more dice and a hammer. <laughs> well, we had the same dice and they sucked, so we need to throw those away. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 there are times where it's just like uh, I'm, yeah. I'm done with these dice. Put them in a microwave. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, yeah. we're moving on. But yeah, right. yeah, very highs and lows in this, a lot to explore. There will be more from this coming. I'm going to probably continue this game and, and record some of it so that you can kind of see what that looks like and me just talking through what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, because I, I think that's going to be the best way for people to kind of yeah, just, just to pick see it up. See, it, like. see a couple of turns. And I, the reality, though, is I, I, I God love the, the YouTube person out there yeah. that's going to try to set this up and shoot a 15 hour video. And, it, and the, God, God love them. The, but that I, ain't gonna be me. Please, please do it. Yeah, it yeah. ain't gonna be me. The game, the box says it takes eight to 10, eight to 12 hours. If you've, We're if you're slow. experienced. It could be, yeah. Uh, you could do that. I think uh, now it's going to be the 8 to 12 hours. But we've put almost five hours, and we're not quite done with the first year of our term. It could be much shorter if you, like, there's a lot of auto losing. Sure. There's 14 ways to lose this yeah. game. <laughs> so, like, yeah. I guess it could end quicker and you'd have a short game, but yeah. And, and we have not been close to that, but I'm telling you what, right now, China's influence is at eight. They have eight influence yeah. on the board. They only need 15 for an auto win. So they are 60, almost 60% of the way there. Yeah. And we have fought like hell. Yes. We removed, like, two influence from Asia and Pacific. We, clean, we cleared cleaned it out, out and that, now all of a sudden they popped up in Central <laughs> South Asia. We're fighting a conventional war against yeah, it, North Korea. <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of good here. I, I really do. I think people are going to have to give it a chance, sit down with it, roll their sleeves up. Yes. Just push some counters around. You know what? If you screw it up, who cares? Yeah, no. uh, we backtracked <laughs> on some things yep. that was like, oh, we would never make that. We would never do well, that it was, because it, you have it, to do it on a one, and we're like, "Let's do it!" And you're like, "No, you can't do that." that yeah, that, you're like, that's "Oh, too that's, you, no, we would never, no." Yeah. So like, and it's that kind of, especially when you're learning this game. I, you know, this game probably isn't for everyone because yeah. I think you know that's, some people aren't looking for no, this kind no of doubt. experience. But if if you like big rich solo gaming that you're going to set up and you're going to leave set up for a while, this has some really interesting... Yep. This has a ton of decision space in it. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing people are going to ask. Because, you know, you play some of those chart flippers and it's like, you've got, like, one binary choice here and you have, like, another one here and another yeah. one here. And that's pretty much it. And it's a very story game. Yeah. This is like, when it comes to your actions, you have, like... 24 things that you can choose from mm -hmm. and you can do some of them tw like there's a lot of decisions to be made here and things to do yeah is a lot of it reactive yes especially early in the oh, game oh it's very reactive yes Will, is some of it proactive mm -hmm. yeah some of it is yep. I, I hope later in the game more of it's proactive yeah if you can kind of get on top you can then start like doing all this well, well, I also think this cabinet it, dynamic is pretty interesting too i'm not sure we did that well at it no we um i i think they each have three different abilities and some are good at some things and some are not good at others and, and we I'm, we we chose poorly on, I on a lot of those i think we chose poorly to start and i also think we but i i think that's an interesting dynamic that over time the course of a game you can really use that to your advantage and make a lot of decisions about how you Manipulate that to yeah. benefit you. The other thing that's pretty interesting is the action points. It's it's pretty interesting. It's an economy. It, we, we didn't have a lot. We had 19 to start. Yes. And I think we're down to one. two. One. We're down to one. <laughs> and we still have two rows of actions. So we're about 75%, 80% done. Yeah, so we've got, we've got seven actions left in the game. 
Oh, God, yeah. I, I, of this round. And so we have one action point. That's and, not good. And typically action points are used to give you a modifier. Yeah. Some, some actions require you to spend one. They do. And so that's that's where it starts to get scary. Yeah, you, like, you can't uh, do that. I already need to do this. Yep. And then someone's, you can also toss them in for modifiers. But managing those and doing the thing that we talked about that we didn't really do that much, foregoing an action yeah. to gain an action point. Sometimes you're going to have to do that. Yeah. And those are really key decisions about how you do that. Yeah. Um, I, I also, I'm going to go back to Labyrinth one time. Labyrinth is one of my favorite games of all time. Agreed. I've played it solo. We've played it two-player. I feel a lot of that here because it's the concept of I'm working on this region, right? And I'm, I'm doing my best to try to get it all stabilized. And I'm trying to work here. And, oh, you know, I get it cleaned up. And now there's a huge fire over here that I got to Everything else with. gone to hell, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's like, then you got to move over here. And once you stamp that out, there's going to be another fire and it's it, it, yeah. There's it's, a lot of choice about how I go about that. Yeah, and and it's also a game where I presume that you're never gonna clear the board, right? No, it's, it's not that kind of a game. So it's just do it, as best as you can. If you could see this board, oh, it's a nightmare compared to what it started as. I mean, this is a disaster. The, there are six terror groups here in the Middle East with two <laughs> civil wars going on. Tension coming out the wazoo. Eight terror groups. Uh, I mean, it's just insane, right? There's another. This one's terrible. The Central South Asia one. It's just. Yeah. And they weren't that bad when we started. No. We and have not been good. We've not done. I, I think we've done some things wrong, but that's part of learning. And that's part of playing this game because it's yes. not going to be. It's not going to be easy the first time. It's just not. And I have, I have, having played through effectively almost one year. I have picked up a significant amount of knowledge of like, yeah. oh, I should have been doing this. Sure. Or like, I should have taken this action at this point so that later on it would have enabled me to do these other things. Yeah. Agreed. <sighs> but I, I think ultimately in the end, I've had a good and enjoyable time. Yes. We played it cooperatively, but I have confidence that I could set this up and I could play through it. Yeah. It might take me a long time. You also need like, Seven cups. Seven opaque draw cups. So just like, know that. I put the crisis cups in my Hestia, who's the nice. god of the hearth, who's there to protect you. It did not work. Uh, so <laughs> she's fired. And then we use some uh, mixing bowls Mixing here. bowls. I got, we, got a, we got a little TPA mug. Yep. Which you can buy on our Teespring, which is down below. Appreciate you. Great, great draw, <laughs> yeah. draw things. But, but uh, so Interesting. You, yeah. You need a lot of space. Need a good amount of time, and it takes a bit of effort to invest into this. But uh, if you like solitaire gaming, that's this kind of style, I think you can have a good time. There's a lot here uh, yeah. to explore, and your games will never be the same. No, never. So there's a ton of cards. We and and in setting up the game, there's we a took out there's eight, a ton of cards. Fifteen to eighteen cards out of each of the years. There's uh, probably. We've got two thirds of the cards out and a third of the cards in the game are not even in the game. Yeah. So like, uh, who even knows what any of this stuff is? Yeah, yeah, and that's so. This is also one of those games. If this was set up at a convention, and somebody was walking by, your eyes are going to go to this. Oh, you, oh yeah, you stop. You're going to turn. What the hell is this? And then you're going to be fascinated. And how in the world are you? doing a simulation of such complex political geopolitical things on a on a cardboard yeah you, you know it, it's fascinating so yeah I, I I liked it I had a good time I really did enjoy this yes I really did I had I had a good time and I'm glad I am glad that we did it co-op the first time yeah because it's so much easier to talk through things mm -hmm. and like am I reading that correctly or am I missing something yeah I, that's always fun so that when I go play the solo I'm like okay I know what I'm doing well I that. do a lot of solo games I'm not sure I do this big of solo games by myself so I, I'm glad we did it this yes. way I now would have confidence once you're done playing with it I might take it and I'll play around yeah. with it so I had a good time. Yes, there will be more content from this coming from us with a bit more kind of in-depth stuff and probably some little, not a whole playthrough, but some like real play stuff as mm -hmm. well. But Mr. President from GMT Games, uh, check it out if there's something you're interested in, but appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander for theplayersaid.com. And I'm Grant.